Welcome to news. Um. <laughs> news. News. Oh, you two are getting weirder news. and weirder every week. I swear. I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna. It's do gonna get you. harder and harder every week. I swear, love of God. I don't yeah. know what the fuck I'm gonna pull out next time. What have you? What have you? What have you started? It's going to get harder and harder. Let's not talk about pulling things out. Hi. Honestly, Zeno. What have you started? <laughs> right. I'm, I'm it a little is. worried about sitting next to you. <laughs> Well, it's it a good is. thing that it's gone as how many miles between us, but regardless. <laughs> Alright, all right, let's do this. It is it is Kelumpai News for the week commencing the 4th of June, 2023. I am your host, Nazareth. I am joined, as always, by Thalian and Zeno. How are you guys doing this week? Yeah? How many week? News. Yes. That's News. Alright. I feel, I feel confused, Nazareth. I don't know what's going on in the world of Japan and anime and manga and stuff like i don't i'm so lost without oh. the knowledge being like some kind of televised in some sort of like internet streaming service to me i don't know what's going on as what is i need news well aren't you lucky that we're here for your news let's 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 well let's and, you know we're here for their news not you know but. Well, your news too. It's your news. You know, it's everyone's news. That's fine. It's 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 our news. Uh, right. It's so informative, whatever it is. It, speaking speaking of manga, uh, Hiro Mashima's extensive manga collection, comprising more than 130 volumes and valued at over 1,400 US dollars or 1,100 pounds, has been made available on Humble Bundle for mere 30 dollars or 24 pounds. Uh, this comprehensive set encompasses popular titles like Fairy Tale, Eden Zero, and Rave Master, along with spin off manga and other miscellaneous works. By purchasing the bundle, individuals not only gain access to an array of captivating stories, but also contribute to a noble cause. The proceeds from these sales support Bink, the book industry charitable foundation, uh, which adds, uh, aids bookstore owners, booksellers, and comic uh, store employees, and owners in times of unexpected financial crisis. Interested buyers have the opportunity to avail themselves of this offer until June twenty second. So you know, not too mm -hmm. much longer by the, after after uh, this comes out. Um, I think that's, I think this that's is cool. Fucking amazing! Yeah. yeah. Honestly, look at that. Humble Bundle's uh, great. I love that they started doing yeah. you know books and stuff too. Um. Definitely. Yeah. This. Yeah. This so is, so for okay. other for other titles uh, at the five dollar tier. Uh, are the the fairy tale ones? Uh, oh, I see. So you get more volumes depending on how much you donate, right? So the thirty thirty dollar tier gets all of fairy tale, including the sa the side stories. Fairy girls, I don't know what that is. Uh, fairy tale S and fairy tale Blue, Blue Minstrel, Superman. plus all the previous tiers. Wow! Nice. Rave Master, Monster Soul, impressive. Fairy Girl, this is, Zero. Yeah, that's cool. This is this is mm. absolutely insane. Yeah. Yep. What format right. is it, does it say that what format they supplied in? Or uh not in this story. They're, if if memory okay. serves, they tend to do things like CBZ files. Um oh, which enough. you know, which is just like, okay, that's just super convenient. Mm -hmm. But like, oh, I mean, this is CBC, uh, EPUB, PDF. and PDF. Oh yes, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, good. yeah. That's oh, this is incredible. Mm. I am not kidding of how amazing this is. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting, getting that much this. manga. In Honestly, that they're not little... wrong. Being over a thousand for that, uh, in you know, buying new, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's so, cool. all right, shall we move on? Moving on, yes. The toy company Tomi has joined forces with Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA, and other organizations to create a tiny transforming robot inspired by the Transformers franchise. Uh, named Sora Q, this robot will be carried on JAXA's Smart Lander for investiga investigating Moon, or SLIM, Lunar Lander in August to showcase precision landing technology. The development of Sora Q draws inspiration from Takara Tomi's expertise in constructing small and lightweight machinery capable of transformation, effectively blending the Transformers series with humanity's foray into space exploration. 
Uh, additionally, a physical toy version called the Luna Cruiser Prime is being released in collaboration with JAXA, Toyota, and Takara, uh, Takara Tomy, a model after a real life Luna Cruiser. The Luna Cruiser Prime toy, featuring elements of Optimus Prime, uh, will retail for 11,000 Japanese yen, that's uh, 79 US dollars or 63 uh, British pounds, uh, starting from late March 2024. Uh, Pre-orders made through the crowdfunding platform Campfire will grant early access to the toy one month ahead of its street release, along with exclusive purchases, a display stand, a video message from Luna Cruiser Prime, and acknowledgement as a backer on the product's website. Uh, The Campfire campaign is scheduled to launch on June 8th at 10am Japan Standard Time. Uh, So just a few days. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, just a few days from the release of this, yes. That's kind of crazy. We actually have a... Uh, transforming robot going off to uh, going off to space, and a toy a based off it already in the works. Oh, they do already have a page open. That's cool. Nice. Damn. Look at the solar panel on it. That's cute. Oh, it's an actual video. No, Damn. I don't want the actual video. That is that is really cute. That is really cute. <laughs> mm. I just love the fact that it looks like Optimus Prime. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Prime. All right. Man. Absolutely nuts. Right, moving on to absolutely nuts. Toho has announced that the Phantom Blood arc of Hiro uh, Hirohiko I didn't know that was his first name. Uh family name, family name. First name. Hirohiko's I, uh, oh god damn it Hirohiko Akiha um, <laughs> I thought it was nope. giving you a good nope. one this week Hirohiko I'm sorry nope, nope 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 I can do this <laughs> right I'm a fucking fan of the series I can bloody do this <laughs> Hirohiko Araki's Jojo's Bizarre Adventure manga will be adapted into a stage musical set to premiere in Tokyo's Imperial Theatre in February 2024 the musical will be directed by Nay? Oh, uh, nay? Nay. Is... Nay? Okay, nay? I think that's nay. Nay? Nay? Hasegawa. Nay. Hasegawa? Ha- Hasegawa. Uh, known for previously working on the stage adaptation of Akira's... Mm-hmm. No. Araki. Araki's, damn it. Um, Shiki... Shike... Shiko... Fuck. Shikoshu? That's a Goku. Shingo. Yeah. Fine. Manga in 2015. <laughs> French composer Dove Eight Atia. Um, that's will- French, so that's just Dove. Shut up. As in Dove Atia bird. will <laughs> handle the music composition for the production while. Sun yes, oh, Sun shit. I hate you, Nazareth. <laughs> Sun Yeyasu Motoyashi, uh, known for his involvement in My Hero Academia's stage production, will be responsible for penning the script. Um, here's how Viz Media described the Phantom Blood arc: Young Jonathan Joestar's life is forever changed when he meets his new adopted brother Dio. For some reason, Dio has a smoldering grudge against him and derives pleasure from seeing him suffer. This is Jonathan. But every man has his limits. As Dio finds out, this is the beginning of a long and hateful relationship. Indeed. I can see how the first season could be adapted into a stage play. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very much the British dramaticism going on there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Zeno. I'm sorry. Shorter um, names, Nazareth. Right. <laughs> just, I'll just next time I'll just remove the names. Um. So, uh, a bit of a bit of forewarning to this story. Uh, it involves what we're going to call a mass event involving a involving a gun in an effort to keep YouTube from getting angry. However, it's also an update to a story from early April that we've already talked about. Um. The the families of four victims in. Uh, a mass event involving a gun last year in Buffalo, New York, have filed a lawsuit against several companies, including Good Smile Company and the anonymous message board 4chan. 
The lawsuit also targets Meta, formerly Facebook, Amazon, Twitch, Google, YouTube, Alphabet, Reddit, Snapchat, Discord, gun dealer, vintage firearms, body armor manu manufacturer, RMA ar armaments, and the parents of the perpetrator, Peyton uh, Gendron? Gendron? Gendron. Uh, the Gendron. lawsuit. Yeah. The lawsuit alleges that social media platforms played a role in radicalizing the shooter and recommends content that affirmed his hateful beliefs, such as the Great Replacement Theory. The lawsuit primarily focuses on holding social media companies accountable for their alleged role in radicalizing the shooter and promoting harmful content. Uh, Good Smile was included in the lawsuit due to its previous investment of uh, 2.4 million US dollars, or about 1.9 uh, British pounds, in 4chan in 2015, acquiring a 30% share in the finances of the website, where the perpetrator supposedly discussed and disseminated his plans. Uh, in an April statement, Good Smile said, We do not have a partnership with 4chan, never had influence over the management and or control of 4chan, and added, We severed any limited relationship we previously had with 4chan in June of 2022. Since then, we have not had any relationship with 4chan. The uh, company has not responded to further requests for comment, citing confidentiality obligations. Um, mm. This is, I mean... Yeah. So on, on I'm not the, even slightly surprised that this is still happening to Good Smile. Yeah. Uh, we still, my company that I work for is a print company, and we did sell uh, in a bit of a bad move about mm, 15 years ago uh, to a couple of investors who turned out to be shady types that were hiding massive debts for three of the companies they invested in. Mm. And our relationship with them very badly affected some of our relationships with our clients. Mm. And even though we did a management buyout within literally a month of discovering this, uh, and we put ourselves into quite a bit of debt to do so, uh, we're still getting reference to these people you know, 15 years down the line. We still have people a little bit leery of us wondering if we're still in any way in, in, in touch with them. Mm. So yeah. the fact that yeah. Good Smile is still getting uh, horrible uh, inclusions in lawsuits only four years down the line, that's, or, you know, only, only a year or so down the line, that's, that's, I'm not surprised in the slightest. Well, like, the, when, when did this uh, event happen? I don't Do know. It was that... sometime last year. They don't say, uh, I don't believe they say in the article. Um, but yeah, Wait, was this I, I want to say it was late was like, last year. Was this the one that was like widely spread? Um, like you know, it had a lot of um media coverage. Probably. I mean, they all do these days. Don't, 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 don't. They won't be able to see it. They won't be able to. They won't be able to see it on screen. Oh, okay, fine. Different, different browser window. Ugh. Okay, fine. Oh, that event was back in May 14th. Ah, so this was after, they severed ties after that event. It sounds like it might be that event that mm -hmm. even caused them to sever ties. But, but even so, like, I think, they I were, don't they think They never had a controlling reasonable. interest, though. They only had a 30% interest. It wasn't, but you know, I they don't had think, no... I don't, <laughs> yeah, like, if, if someone's, if someone's gonna, um, what's it called, post about this stuff on social media and things like that, like, how much policing of these platforms can they do realistically do? Non, no, no. Do non-law enforcement agencies have to provide? Yeah. When it's just like, oh, you know, the the mere mention of the word, um, shooty shooty bang bang, right? And then you know, it's 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 triggered some sort of bot to mm. raise it to like, I realistically, but, I, but even, I, yeah, I genuinely feel. There's just not enough I manpower in the world to 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 track it all, you know. And no, the, but the, here's AI the, thing, right? get, the but, algorithms get it wrong all the time. But here's here's the big thing, though, right? You don't have to like law enforce it where the event happens, right? You can just monitor this stuff in terms of you know, um, I where where is the Pentagon? Is that Washington, D.C.? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. 
you know, if if you have like, okay, this this entire floor of the Pentagon, or this entire, it's like, you know, one floor of this one wing is dedicated to just filtering social media stuff, right? You could actually just go like, right, okay, so we're investigating this. We can follow this, and then we can go and um, what's called notify the correct. Um, but the companies themselves shouldn't. They don't have the facilities to. Exactly. You know, they, they barely have the facilities to keep the lights on. Especially not a place that is already known for being notoriously hard to uh, manage. Like yeah. But, I mean, part of the whole point, point of 4 is it's there, anonymous. Yes, but the whole, exactly. The, the content's anonymous. And the content, these, these entire threads that start could be parody. Yeah. 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 So it it does need eyes on it. Don't get me wrong, right? There's, there, you I can. Don't think there are enough eyes for for the amount of posts that you see, though. Right, but you can build special case studies and things. You know, you can build special. Um, they're called state machines, right? So it's like, okay, so here's trigger warning one. Here's trigger warning two. Trigger warning three goes to a person, right? Okay, we're still getting some false claims in here. Let's put extra trigger warnings in, right? Mm -hmm. Are we still going to get some slippage? Yes, we're still going to get some slippage. But at least it's something, right? Yeah. Because as far yes. as I know, nothing like this exists, it's right? Uh, technically, the FBI is supposed to track some of this stuff in practice. Yeah. They don't do a very good job of it. With, well, with how can't. social yeah. people are in general, and how much of this stuff actually does get posted online, law enforcement does need to catch up. You're absolutely right, right on that. But again, and like, or the companies themselves responsible. I think that can lead to I mean, some. I mean, they can put some basic protections in place, but they can't. You know, it's, it's especially, yeah. You just have to hire but, so I mean, many somebody, experts. Like cooperating, so the, the like the, the police enforcement. Uh, yeah, yeah. Algorithms can actually plug directly into your site. That's that's fantastic. That would but, be cooperation. So, in that sense. So, there are certain um, responsibilities. I think if you're going to, if if you're not just a, a, a platform, like mm -hmm. 4chan is ungoverned, right? As far as I understand it, 4chan is completely ungoverned. You can say and do whatever the hell you want, right? But there are limitations within platforms like mm -hmm. Reddit or Facebook. They are governed, right? Mm -hmm. To which extent, if they are governed, Right, then it's down to the um, what's it called those companies to provide access, right? And I'm sorry if if it's to prevent um, mass um, events. events. Thank you. Right, then it kind of kind of needs to happen, but there's obviously the privacy problem involved. Yeah, exactly. Right? It's, because it's, you'd yeah. be amazed. You would be absolutely amazed about how much data is actually collected about you when it comes to a website. Yeah. Even, we when, can, we even when you are all. supposedly anonymous. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm even sure if, that you're Even if you're anonymous, I can tell you where then. the fuck you live. Yeah. Uh, right, anyway. we still got a lot of move story, news stories, unfortunately. That's so let's news. let's quit, uh, move move That's on news. from this this sad news to uh, some other interesting legal news. Sorry, technical difficulties there. No worries. Well, why did that actually happen in the first place? That's annoying. The fact that it's your news. Probably. So okay. moving on. Uh, also in legal updates, according to Abema Times, the, in the insider trading case involving game programmer and director Yuji Naka, the prosecution has recommended a sentence of two and a half years in jail, along with a two and a half million yen fine, in addition to a penalty of 170 million yen, uh, totaling 172.5 million yen, uh, or about 1.24 oh, I... million US dollars. Sorry, I thought I added the conversion uh, to this one. Apparently I didn't. That's fine. Mm. Yeah. So we've got the total. So yeah. two and a half years. Uh, the prosecution has recommended a sentence of two and a half years in jail, along with a total uh, monetary fine of 172.5 million yen, uh, or about 1.24 million US dollars. Uh, the prosecution argued in a Tokyo district court that Naka showed no remorse for the crime and committed it with deliberate intent. 
On the other hand, the defence is advocating for a reduction in the fine and a suspended sentence, which is interesting. Uh, Nake himself expressed apologies, acknowledging the harm caused to the fairness and credi creditability of the marketplace. The final judgment is scheduled to be delivered on July 7th. Uh, Nake had previously admitted to the charges of violating the Financial Instruments and Exchange Act uh, during his first trial hearing in March, and the legal proceedings are now approaching their conclusion. Is this the mm, Olympics the... scandal? No, different one, different scandal. Uh, this is the Which guy is this one? Uh, who... Uh, arrested prosecutors on November 18th, suspicion of insider trading. The arrest was connected with a arrests of former Square Enix employees, Taisuki Sasuke, mm. Sasaki and his acquaintance. Oh, uh, so it's insider trading. Yeah, yeah, yeah insider yeah. trading to do Originally with the, investing uh, in the company gaming and after series. they learned it was developing. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. So they so they knew that it was doing that these companies were doing stuff with Square Enix, and they mm. invested in those companies. Right. Specifically because they had that knowledge. Yeah, and then they did it again with Final Seven, Final Fantasy Seven, the first Soldier mobile game, and some other stuff. Uh, so yeah, right. yeah. Cool. Okay, so moving on. Deskworks and Aniplex's smartphone role-playing game World to War, no, World to World, sorry, World to World is set to cease operations on July 31st, just five months after its initial launch. Jeez! Yep. <laughs> yep. The official announcement stated that despite efforts to deliver satisfying gameplay experiences through updates and additional content, the development team found it challenging to meet players' expectations. Which seems to Released be the default statement they release anytime something like this happens. Yeah. Released on February 22nd, World to World is touted as Aniplex, sorry, by Aniplex as the world's first role-playing game that employs a spirit split-screen mechanic, allowing players to interact with two distinct halves of a world. The game's narrative unfolds in a period marked by multiple uh, crises uh, across various realms, with a division um, causing conflict among people, ultimately leading to their gradual downfall is that Divian? Divan? 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 the lord of um division actually um pers sorry pursues this state of discord while wave weave weave weave, weave the girl uh, of the boundary stands in opposition fighting to preserve harmony in a moment of solitude, Weave entrusts players with a small fragment of hope as they navigate the game's immersive storyline. Hmm. I mean, it mobile kind of game, sounds mobile interesting, game, mobile game. but also, yeah, it really yeah. does. Mobile game, mobile game, mobile game. Mobile game, mobile game, mobile game. And there's, there's no another um, one. Sorry, go ahead. Or it's just, oh, I see. Oh, I see. This was the initial game. announcement. Yeah. Mm. Eh. Like I, I, I kind of okay, fine. Yeah, I don't know why mobile games are treated with such um, piss poor attention. It's yeah. like okay, long -term Candy attention? Crush, huh? Specifically, long term attention. Well, not just that, but like I'd be happy with a one and done, right? Let you know. Let me pay thirty quid for a mobile game. I'll fucking play yeah. it on my phone. And then job's done. But they're not. They're treated as a Candy Crush saga every step of the way. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you know, yeah. it, it, like, it's, oh, God, it, it's, it would be so cool if we had mobile games that weren't just um, that were on a the way scale of, to of con like money PC out games people. or whatever. Yeah. Sure. You know. Yes. You just have a nice little experience and then you're done, you know? Yeah. No, no, but no. Instead, we just got to melt money out of people. Anyway. <laughs> Next. Right, let's move on. We're, we're coming into the home stretch now. Uh, Genvid Entertainment has released a trailer for its upcoming, upcoming live interactive streaming experience called Silent Hill Ascension. I see, I've wondered what that meant, and they finally kind of explained that. The uh, CEO of Genvid, Jacob Navik, explained on Twitter that the game focuses on intergenerational trauma experienced by characters from various parts of the world. As the stream runs on Amazon's 
IVS backend for Twitch, viewers will have the power to shape the story in real time by completing missions and puzzles that affect the character's mental states. The audience's choices will determine the canonical ending, allowing for an interactive narrative experience. The project involves a talented team who have worked, uh, who have experience with renowned companies like Pixar, Telltale, Riot, Wizards of the Coast, and more. The release date and further details will be announced in the upcoming months, including where to watch and participate in the experience, as well as how to get involved in the show. Uh, Silent Hill Ascension is a collaborative effort between Genvid, Behavior Interactive, known for Dead by Daylight, J.J. Abrams' Bad Robot Games, which uh, I, uh, uh, and J. DJ, J. yeah, and TJ2 Entertainment, a company specialized in adapting games for television and film. Uh, so that's it's interesting. Um, is anybody else actually worried for Twitch plays Silent Hill? Yeah. <laughs> um, we saw the pain I mean, of Twitch plays Pokemon. Five hours it, to pass a specific it, square. It could be interesting. It's probably not going to be, but it could be interesting. I'm, I'm betting bottom dollar. You've got some of the aesthetic, uh, right? I, I just feel that this is going to be an excessive, like, lie. Yeah. And it's like, no, this 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 is just, this is entirely a video. This isn't an actual game in any way, shape, or form. I, yeah. Mm. Although I it sounds like there are back-end, ga like, there's back-end gameplay elements, maybe, but I don't know. Yeah, well, this is, like, I'm guessing it's a, it's a video powered by Twitch polling, basically. Yeah, they've, they've, they've already made. Are you do they've already that? made. Yeah, they've already made all the variations, and they're probably going to be two or three at best. And it depends on which ones the audience chooses. Mm. You know. Anyway, it's not quite going to be uh, Markiplier in space here, guys. Hey, at least yeah, and that's, it's, that's the problem. At least it's not. Oh, yeah. I guess that's our big bad guy. They never really show them. Uh, at least it's not Silent Hill, um, Shattered Memories. That's that's all I have to say. Oh dear. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Uh, so next, uh, the Ribbon X Jump Elementary School Student Manga Prize, uh, a collaborative effort of Shueisha's manga publications Ribbon and Weekly Shonen Jump slash Shonen Jump Plus, and the Psycho Jump publications, is now accepting submissions, uh, with a deadline set for 31st of March 2024. Participants must be 12 years old or younger at the time of submission, and a collaboration among two or more individuals is permitted. The grand prize winner will have their work published in one of the participating magazines and receive a complete analog drawing set or a, a Chromebook with a Wacom tablet. Uh, additionally, all applicants will receive a free booklet from the editorial departments to encourage their journey towards becoming manga artists. Submissions can be made online or through postal mail, and detailed instructions can be found on the contest website. The panel of judges includes 10 prominent manga artists who will evaluate the submissions. In conjunction with the Manga Prize, the Jump Paint app is running a collaboration campaign with Ribbon Mag Magazine, uh, featuring the Challenge Ribbon content. Uh, this collaboration allows users to practice drawing and paintings by tracing artwork from popular Ribbon manga, and manga artists will provide tips and advice throughout the app, and various sound effects using Ribbon manga have been added to the app's materials palette. Uh, the July issue of Ribbon Magazine includes a booklet explaining how to use the Jump Paint app. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Mm. I I love I like big competitions for for young yeah. artists. Yeah. yeah, and you think you know it's like oh you can have this drawing set or this Chromebook, but those drawing sets are like mm. if it's a, if we're talking a full oh, yes. um a professional drawing set that's expensive. Ooh. And have you seen how much a good Wacom goes for these days? Mm, that's true. That is true. They're insane. I mean, I I have one that is still worth you know, four years down the line from me buying it uh, in excess of £300. Yeah. Uh, i say like four years down of solid use, that's how much it still goes for used. Yeah. Right. A, f yeah. a friend of mine um, who passed her master's degree, uh, her parents were nice enough to buy her uh, a, a, a Wacom tablet. I can't remember which one, it, it, what it's called, but you all know it. It's, it's the big ass one that like will take up an entire desk yeah the a3 right? size um yes i think it is but it's it's like you know it's it's absolutely massive that thing costs three grand yeah right yeah. yes it is it is so but stupidly it's, expensive 
but it's also yep. like the best on the market and has all these yeah. like it, the pressure sensitivity on it is incredible and yeah not not just yeah. that oh no 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 but <laughs> as long as as long as uh, wacom doesn't actually remove certain features with updates and things of but course. the um mm. Because we, um, what's called, I actually researched it for her and I said to her, get the generation one. The generation two doesn't actually, um, oh god, what does the generation two not do? Um, oh dear, uh, what does the gen two do? Oh, uh, they, they disabled, it was like an extra like 500 quid, but they disabled those features that made it different from the gen one. I was like, just get the gen one then. There's no point in getting the mm -hmm. gen two because those features have been disabled. Yeah, um, wow. Yeah, so wow. should we move on to the, uh, yeah, Wacom tablets are expensive as hell. Right, okay, so, mm -hmm. director Takayuki Hiaro? Hiraio. Hiraio. Hiraio, damn. Animation Hiraio. Studio Clap, character designer Shingo Adachi, and composer Kenta Masuka, no, Masukuma, um who previously worked together on the anime film Pompo the Cinephile. 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 Somebody who loves somebody uh, who loves movies. Okay. Are uh, reuniting for a new untitled anime project known as Wasted Chef. This upcoming anime will be Hiaro's No, did I do that right? Nope. Hirao. Yeah, Hira Hiaro's Hirao. Hirao's um, first original work, Hira <laughs> Fuck, I can't do it, okay? Hirao. <laughs> Sounded a bit British, mate. Oh, I'm fucking trying, okay? Hirao. <laughs> it's because I'm having to phonetically pronounce everything. Uh, will it be attending the Anime Expo event next month where a screening of Pompo will take place, following it uh, by a Q&A session on July 1st. Additionally, to com uh, commemorate the film's second anniversary, it will be screened at the EJ Anime Theatre Shinjuku from June 4th to 8th, featuring a staff talk on June 4th. Here's how the plot of Pompo is described. Originating out of the movie uh, Capital Nyaliwood. Nyaliwood. <laughs> okay. Pompo has been shooting uh, one B grade entertainment flick after another that anyone would enjoy. One day, Pompo's movie buff assistant, Gene, uh, spots a new script written by Pompo and um, is moved by its exquisite story. However, Pompo tells him to direct it. Thus, Gene takes on the first direct, sorry, his first directing gig. Meanwhile, Natalie, on um, an ordinary girl who just arrived in town with uh, movie actress dreams, has been discovered by Pompo. That just sounds kind of mm. interesting. It does, actually. Cute, cute little movie. Yeah. Uh, uh, another uh, another yeah. G-Kids uh, release. Uh, yep. Uh. But that does bring us to the end of the news for this Indeed. week. Indeed. Been quite a ride. <laughs> yeah. Lots, yes. lots, of, lots of names for, names again. Lots, <laughs> lots of names for Zeno to, to, to read. It's great fun. Yeah. <laughs> Subscribe to Zeno's Patreon yeah, to help him help him purchase <laughs> uh, <laughs> really <need> purchase <laughs> into million pronouns Japanese names, yes. Uh no, it's they, so <laughs> they, <laughs> Honestly. It's, it's like he was he was being British and trying to say Herato. <laughs> Hirao. Oh, uh, hero. Make sure to stay tuned later this week for Cup Cast, where we discuss anime and uh, as pop, you know, and and its relationship with pop culture, which uh, turned out to be pretty good. So, yeah. You know what's not popular? What? Right? Me butchering these names. Oh yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> no, I think I think actually the audience loves that. Uh, right. So yeah, wow. I think that'll do it for this week. So uh, everyone have fun and uh, stay tuned for for news and stuff enjoy this news for news <laughs>